Hello, my name is Garrett Jackson, and today we're going to talk about Google Forms and Google Quizzes, and we're going to cover three points. First, how to find Google Forms, how to edit a Google Form, and how to send a Google Form. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show as we learn how to create a Google Quiz using Google Forms together. The thing we're going to talk about today is how to find Google Forms to create your quiz. So in a web browser, like I have open, I already have created a quiz for us, but we're going to look at where to find it. So we're going to go to forms.google.com, and that brings up all the forms and stuff like that. And as you can see, the form that I created is right here. And we open it up. And that's the quickest way to get to the forms. Now, if you're going to create a new form, and we can go back here to this website. We can go create here, but go to the template gallery and you can go over here down to where it says education. You can do a blank quiz, an assessment, worksheet, exit ticket, course evaluation. Uh, for this one, we just created an assessment. You click on it and it brings you to something very similar to this. So some of the basic settings in this quiz that we're going to look at are I collect email addresses. I limit to one response. I go over here to show a progress bar if I use multiple pages. And then I make this a quiz, assign point values, questions, and a lot of auto grading. And I keep the defaults right here. Uh, I do collect the email address because my particular school, we give the students email addresses and it allows me to track uh, the uh, grades and Google Classroom in my particular grade book uh, imports directly into our parent portal, which is kind of a handy feature. Now, as a special education teacher, uh, there are some features within the Google uh, Forms that make specially designed instruction a little easier, and I'm going to show you a couple of those. So while we have um, our standard questions here, the ability, we can add a video here. And you just go over here to add video, and then you can either do a search or a URL. Um, and that's very simple to find. So if you go to YouTube, click right here to YouTube, you can pick any video. For example, uh, let us, um, the true cause of the Civil War, we can click this TED Talk right here. We won't let it start. Uh, we come over here to share, copy the URL. And then we can come back over here to our, our Google. We can add a video. We go to URL. We paste it. It pulls it up, and we can select, and it adds it right here. Um, that's very simple. We can do some editing. We can center it. Very simple. The other thing we can do is when we write our questions with my particular students who are uh, very low readers, <coughs> we would have talked about symbols and so in the video, it talks about the religion. So I have placed uh, symbols here along with the uh, appropriate vocabulary word that um, goes with the uh, question. So what religion were the moguls? And that would be Muslim. So that would be this answer right here. And when we click on that, we can see the green check mark here corresponds with the correct answer. Um, we can come over here. Uh, when we click on things, we can uh, do the same thing. This particular is a drop down. I could do a picture here if I need to as well. Um, and then we have um, this question right here. It talks about correct answers 200, 200 years. Short answers I'm looking for. I'd like to have a sentence, but I know my students won't give me that. Um, so <clears throat> uh, I have the option to go back later and to... Uh, add that in. Uh, one of the nice things about asynchronous learning is that sometimes you get guests, like my son who's sitting on my back right now, gets to tag along with us. Um, for this particular question, I've added a photo, identify the building in this photo, which is the, the topic, and then the question is, based on the photo above, identify the building and why it's important. And for this particular question, I'm looking for uh, a long answer, usually two to three sentences telling me that this is the Taj Mahal, it's located in India, it's a mosque, and it was built uh, for one of the Mughals' uh, wives. Uh, that would be covered in. It's worth 12 points. And that brings me to, I want to talk about a couple things real quick. Point value. 
You can set your own points. This particular quiz is worth 15 points. Uh, you can set your point value to whatever. You can also make points for different questions, different values. So for example, these questions right here are worth a point apiece, and this essay is worth 12 points. Uh, there's a variety of things. Uh, you can add sections, you can add videos, images, you can add a title and description, you can import questions, and you can add questions. The thing you can look at too is while you're building, you can do a preview. You can take a look and see how it looks. And this looks good to me. Uh, because this is for special ed students, I've reduced the number of distractors uh, from, in this case, from four to three. In this case, when I look at it, I have three here. I can do whatever. Notice that when I click on this and I don't choose an answer, it says this is a required question. Prompts them won't let them submit it until they answer everything. Um, the last thing I want to show you is how you send. So typically what I do is I create collect email addresses and you can send through the emails. Um, that works okay. What I typically do is I will grab the link right here or I will grab the embed code. But typically the link, what I will do is I'll copy that and then I will take it to what my learning management software is. In this case, I'm using Google Classroom. I will copy the link and I will put that up in the stream uh, for them to take if I want them to take it separately. Or what I typically will do is I will take that link and go into the assignments and I will add it as a quiz. When it asks me for a Google quiz, I put that link in and it ties everything together. And this concludes our video on how to use Google Forms as a Google quiz. I hope you learned a little bit today about how to find a form, how to modify a form, and how to send a form. If you have any questions, I'd like you to reach out to me to my email address that's on the screen. That's garrett.jackson at lawtonps.org. Again, that's garrett.jackson at lawtonps.org. That is my work email. And if you have a social media account, such as Twitter, you can follow me at Twitter at gjaxson01. Now, I don't post much on Twitter these days because I just don't have time. However, I look for having followers that can you know, bring me up to date on all the latest tech news. So thank you again today for joining me in this adventure that we've had, and I look forward to working with you soon. Bye!